This is me at age 14. I was your average boy, nothing special. I earned good grades, played football, ate all the time. This is my friend Daryl, also at age 14. My friend Daryl was a dreamer. He always had this goal to own his own restaurant, but nobody thought he could pull it off. Me, I had faith in him, but even with my imaginative childish mind, it did seem a little unrealistic. I remember one day in class, our teacher, Mr. Haynes, instructed us to write one page about what we wanted to be when we grew up. What I want you to do now is write a one-page paper about what you guys want to be when you grow up. It'll be here before you know it, guys. Write a one-page paper about what you want to be when you grow up. My mind went blank. I really hadn't given this much thought. Daryl, on the other hand, didn't even hesitate. Right off the bat, he began to write what ended up being a six-page paper about the restaurant he wanted to manage when he grew up. He included every detail, from the food they'd serve to the decor, to a detailed sketch of the building structure. He was very enthusiastic about it. Hey. Three days later, we both received our papers. Uh, I want to make sure you get them back. You guys some an assignment a few days ago. All right, we'll get these back to you. If I recall correctly, I got a B-plus on that paper. I guess he thought my dream career wouldn't be able to pay the bills. I ended up writing about being a bus driver. Of course, he was right about this. I never turned out being a bus driver. When Mr. Haynes handed Darrell's paper back to me, I glanced over to see what he scored. I couldn't believe my eyes. An F minus. I didn't even know it was possible to get a grade that bad. Below the F, a comment read, this dream is so unrealistic for a boy like you. No money, no resources, poor family, good luck. How could such enthusiasm get graded so poorly? Mr. Haynes was always more of a tough luck kind of person but I never imagined that he could be so brutally honest with such a joyful child. When I looked up at him, I was expecting tears of despair, but instead I was surprised by a simple shrug. That was it. That's why I always liked Daryl so much. He was the most optimistic person I had ever met. As we grew, my interest shifted over to more technologically advanced topics. While Daryl focused on his dreams of opening a restaurant, both of us became much more advanced in these areas, and we went our separate ways for a while to pursue these dreams. Eventually, Daryl opened up a cafe downtown. They served breakfast and lunch. I remember dining there a few times. The place was actually very nice. The food, service, with atmosphere, all delivered a great experience. I'm proud of him to this day. One day I went in on my lunch break for a coffee. After serving me, Daryl sat across the table with a coffee as well, and we caught up on what had been going on. What happened next was something that I'll remember crystal clear for the rest of my life. I was reaching for my coffee mug when the sound of a large explosion rang through my ears. Oh, wow. What the heck was that? Oh man, I don't know, something blew up somewhere. Get out of here, I'll take right. care, I'll get everybody okay. out of here. Hurry up, go! Wednesday, okay? Let's go, all, all right. right. Everybody out of here, quick!
It all went so fast. I was confused and traumatized. But above all, I just wanted to know that Daryl was okay. Daryl, Daryl, he's back with us. Okay, wow, what's going on with me? Daryl, how are you feeling? Is anything hurting? Man, I'm hard to breathe and I got this tingling in my arm. I don't know what's going on. I just want you to know that when you arrived to the hospital, we ran some tests and there was an infection in your arm. Oh, wow, that's a lot to take in. So you're gonna be fine. But the, the infection that was in your arm was so progressive and so advanced that we had to amputate your arm. Where's my friend Adrian? All right, Daryl, I'm gonna go get your friend Adrian. He's gonna be right in. Okay. Adrian, Daryl's ready to see you now. Thank you. Hey, Daryl. Thank God you're okay, man. The restaurant, buddy, it's gone. My diner? Yeah, buddy. Oh. Yeah. It just burned up, blew up the whole nine yards. Wow, well maybe there's room for improvement. You're taking this news remarkably well. Well, I have two choices. A, I can choose to feel sorry for myself, or B, I can be very grateful and happy. I still have a beating heart, a family, and a home. And I'll take option B. I was speechless. His optimism was overwhelming, and I wondered how God had given him such a great amount of hope. How do you find such happiness in a time of despair? You lost your business and your right arm. How do you find the strength? Adrian, I don't have to search for happiness. It is always with me, wherever I go, whatever I do. You can be in an unfortunate situation, but no matter how sad it is, you can still choose to be joyful. And that was the single most inspiring thing I've heard in my entire life. My friend Daryl was the best friend any man could ask for. He taught me many things in life. But if there's one thing of it all that I permanently remember, is that no matter how terrible, how horrible, or tragic things can get, there's always room for optimism.